So now we're going to take a look at actually swinging a kettlebell. Um, with this next part, we're going to really focus on a triangle. Okay, so when I'm standing here like this, you should be able to clearly see a triangle coming from the foot into my hips, okay, with my legs. Now, that's the big triangle. The little triangle is between my knees and my hips, okay, so I've got a triangle here in this region, okay. When doing your kettlebell swings, we want the kettlebell always to travel through the little triangle, okay? Specifically the top corner, the top point of the little triangle. We never ever on kettlebell swings want to come into that big triangle, okay? Into the lower part of the leg. Always want to be coming into the little triangle, specifically the top point of that triangle. So, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to build on the skills that we've already done. We're going to begin in a deadlift and then progress to doing some swings. So you're going to take your kettlebell, put it on the ground. You're going to go through your setup. You're going to find your sweet spot. Ground yourself to the floor and put that kettlebell between the ankles. Now, we're going to do a deadlift to stand up and then transition straight into a set of swings. Okay? Now, I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of reps here, just maybe three to five, you know, focus on quality reps. You don't want to train an incorrect movement pattern. And I urge you to maybe film yourself at this stage, it might help. So, I'm going to grab the handle, stand up. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna get myself as nice and tall as possible, and then I'm going to feed a little triangle. Okay, so I'll show you that again in a bit. But I start in the deadlift, I then feed the little triangle. Okay, so this space between my knees and my hips. I'm gonna feed that area, with the kettlebell. So what the kettlebell should be doing is coming to this space here under your bum. Okay, so if I, you can see my hand here waving. Okay, kettlebell should be coming to that space here under your bum. Okay, now the first rep is likely to be a little shallower. As you get a feel for it, you should be able to go a little deeper into the movement. So, let's look at that again. And really focus on where the kettlebell is ending up behind me on this video. So the first rep, a little tentative, as you go through it, you get more of a feel for it, and you can go deeper and deeper into it. Again, I'm thinking when I'm doing this on that Velcro analogy, okay? At the start, the Velcro is attached, my upper arm and my rib cage, they are Velcro together. And then feed the triangle, but two, I stand up nice and fast, and as a result, the Velcro disconnects because of the momentum. Kettlebell floats to here, comes back down, reconnects, and I hinge into my hips and go for the next rep. So, show you one more time. This drill really, really works for building your confidence. Remember though, all the same stuff applies finish tall and tight at the top.
That's it. Feet the hips, feet that little triangle. We don't want to be coming down here. It's always in here. Build the momentum and focus on few good quality reps. So this next part of the seminar is gonna look at developing that swing that we've already done. Um, you might have noticed if you've watched the video or if you've tried the swings from the deadlift position, the first rep or few is not perfect. The reps generally get better as time goes by. That's simply because it's very hard to start from zero momentum. So it will take you a good rep or maybe three or four or maybe more reps in order to build the momentum up. Swings are a momentum exercise. So if you wanna make the most out of the movement, you've gotta learn eventually to swing from the floor. Now, for some of you, what you're about to see, it might be very tricky for you to get into position without losing your back position and without losing that feeling of tightness in the bottom that you might have been able to achieve on the deadlift. Very easy fix here is just to raise or elevate your kettlebell using books, for example, or yoga blocks or something like that. Now, with this next piece of the puzzle, we're gonna look at how you get yourself in the right position behind the kettlebell first. So spacing is very important. This time, rather than deadlifting the kettlebell into position from between the ankles, we are gonna start behind the kettlebell. So with your kettlebell on the ground, we're gonna put our feet on the kettlebell. So you can, again, you can estimate this, but like I said earlier in the very first part of the seminar is that we want to build rituals so that we are consistent with how we execute the movement. So when we stand behind the kettlebell, our feet are together, our toes should touch the weight. You're then gonna go through your heel toe drill, heel toe. You're gonna lock and rock. You're gonna dig your heel, your big toe, your little toe into the ground. You're now basically one foot approximately behind the kettlebell. Again, this is excellent because bigger guys with longer arms will have bigger feet and will end further back. Smaller people will obviously be a little closer to the kettlebell, but they'll have shorter arms. So again, it's not gonna be perfect for you, but it's enough of a starting point and it gives you a reference point so you can always be consistent in your setup. Now, you're gonna stand behind the kettlebell. and this next drill, you're gonna do one swing from the floor and then put it back on the ground. That's it. So I'm gonna come down, grab the kettlebell, dig my feet into the ground, tilt the kettlebell towards me. You want that kettlebell to be an extension of the arm. So it's not gonna be here. The shoulder is back, the kettlebell forms a straight line extension of my arm. And from here, I'm gonna throw the kettlebell into the peak or the top of the little triangle and stand. So you can do one rep at a time there, stand up and then go again. The kettlebell comes high through the triangle, into the hips, into here, and then up. So again, we're using that Velcro analogy, we're thinking about that. I'm here, throw the kettlebell back, connect the Velcro, upper arm to rib cage or torso, stand up with as much force as you can, so much so that the Velcro rips and the kettlebell flies up to chest height, or wherever it goes. If you do this with a heavy kettlebell, it's not probably gonna go as high until your hip strength catches up. If you do it with a lighter kettlebell, it may go whew, all the way up to your head. Now, with this, again, it's all about the breathing, okay? The breathing is important here. We wanna make sure that we breathe at the right moments. So we learned earlier, very early on, that when we we hiss, we with the uh, tongue behind the teeth, 
We exhale when the glutes extend at the top. Same is true for the swing. You're gonna here, then the kettlebell will float a bit higher. The breath in on this is not so straightforward, okay? Okay, it's not a slow, gradual inhale on the way down. We're looking for a sharp inhale. Remember what we talked about. The breathing is designed to create or increase pressure. If you take a slow breath in through the nose, yeah, you feel the abs engage, you feel like the diaphragm is working. But if we take a sniff of air in through the nose, you'll notice that the pressure in the abdomen, and you can feel this, you can put your hands on the abs, will increase very quickly. Again, this is what we do to protect our back and to amplify the power that we're able to create in the swim. So what you're gonna do next time you try this, you're gonna throw the kettlebell through the legs into the little triangle, as far back as you can go. Remember the kettlebell is coming from the space under the bar. From here, you get that connection. Velcro on the upper arm, connecting the ribcage. You inhale here, sniff, okay? It's a sniff of air, really sharp. The sharper, the better. From here, stand up. And the kettlebell's gonna float with that big, powerful exhale as the hips extend, okay? So watch here. So inhale, when you get that connection, exhale as you stand up and finish nice and tall, okay? Another thing to think about here when doing this drill, okay, really important that we are maximizing our range of motion, okay? This is where the books come in handy. If you're struggling to get in position and you're losing that perfect hip hinge, Elevate that kettlebell up. But you want to make sure that your hips are starting in a position that's as far back as possible. We don't want to start in a position here where we up here because, again, we're not stretching that bowstring. To stretch the bowstring, the hips have to be back, not up. Okay? So kettlebell swings are a momentum game. So when you're doing them, starting in that position where you're at full stretch, is gonna ensure that the first swing is a good one. The last thing I wanna show you in this piece is a drill called the hike, hike, swing drill, okay? So you can hike the kettlebell two times and then swing it on the third one, okay? So this one really strengthens the bottom position of the swing and ensures that you're not losing your positioning. So you're gonna come here, Go through your setup behind the, uh, the bell. You're going to hike the bell two times. On the third rep, when you hike it the third time, you're going to stand up. Watch. So the aim of this is not to lose that perfect hinge. So we're not lifting the hips too early or doing anything that's gonna compromise that stretch in the hamstrings. You're keeping the butt back until you get that connection. Velcro on Velcro. Upper arm to torso, wrist to thigh. When you get those connections, then you stand up. But till then, your hips, everything else remains stationary, okay? Remains stationary. So try out the single swing from the floor. And the hike, hike, swing grip. They will help build a good foundation for doing multiple swings back to back. So now we're gonna do a set of swings from the ground back to back, okay? So this is the last bit that we're gonna look at today. 
really important that you start to tie everything together. Okay, it's not a case of you learn one thing about the feet and then you discard it. Everything needs to come together. So in this part, I'm going to really slow things down and show you how you should set up and what you should be thinking about when you set up for your swings based on what we've learned today. So understand with my toes touching the kettlebell. I'm going to heel turn my feet into position to get the correct width. So I turn my toes out to the side, keep my other leg fixed, and then point my toes forward. And then do the same on the other leg, keeping this leg fixed. Toes out, toes forward. The next step was the lock and rock. Okay, so I'm going to put my hands on my hips, toes up, come onto my heels, and onto my toes. So I like doing a calf raise with the toes up. Stop, look at your feet, that's your position. For me, remember my toe was turned out on the right side a little more than the left. Might be the same for you, might be slightly different. Go with where you land. Next step is to ground ourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on driving my feet into the ground. So I'm gonna start with my heel, push into the ground, then my toes, my big toe, then my little toe. So you have three points of contact. Call this the tripod fill, okay? Heel, big toe, little toe. Hip should now feel tight. Now from here, I'm gonna take my arms out, okay? Put my hands on my hips in that crease. Look straight ahead, chop back. Stretching this hamstring like a bowstring, okay? I'm trying to get my hips as far back as possible whilst keeping my chest up and a neutral spine, okay? Grab the handle. Now from here, I need to connect that kettlebell. It's part of my body. So I tilt it towards me. Should form now an extension of the arm. From here, I'm going to suck the shoulders back. I'm going to take a few nasal inhales just to tighten up my abs. But remember, we're going to take another one later when the kettlebell comes through into the triangle and a hiss at the top. So we're gonna do five reps here. You need to inhale. Go down. So I shouted out there, here, nasal inhale. Hiss at the top. And then continue the set for five, okay? Very, very straightforward, okay? If you start in the right position and you think about the right things, more or less, the rest of the move will take care of itself. So, things that will probably come up here that will throw you off. We talked about the kettlebell swing being a four count movement. It's not gonna feel like a four count movement when you first start doing it, okay? Don't expect it to. Everything's happening very quickly. You're not well trained enough yet to be able to pick up the distinct stages. As you get more skilled with the kettlebell swing, you'll be able to identify the individual points within the set, a split second. That's okay. Things that you can work on on this move, okay, is keeping the cadence nice and steady. We always talked earlier about trapping ourselves in between our glutes and our abs. The top position is really important and one that people don't often spend enough time in. Quite often the set of swings is a bit rushed. We want to slow things down, okay? You want to enjoy the kettlebell floating out here, okay? You want to try and get it to float as high as you can. So what you can do is two things. Pick a point in front of you and make sure you lock your eyes on that point on each rep for as long as possible. So for me, I have a light switch in front of me, directly in my line of sight, so I'm gonna fix my eyes on that point for as long as possible on each swing. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my glutes switched on for a little bit longer than what feels natural, okay? You don't wanna 
glutes, and then relax them straight away, okay? And unlock the hips. Remember, with the kettlebell swing, we wanna let the kettlebell fall to us, then unlock the hips. So it's really important that you go straight ahead, pick that point, but you keep the glutes switched on until the kettlebell falls to you, okay? So watch this set of swings, see if you can see me float the kettlebell, and to keep my hips engaged until the kettlebell's about to hit me. Okay. Happen very quick. Doesn't matter, okay? If you think about these things, eventually, as you gain more expertise in this movement, time will start to slow down and you'll be able to feel the kettlebell falling and unlock the hips at the right moment, okay? In essence, at the moment, it's gonna be an intention more than a reality. So two things, to maximize the top of your swing and to maximize the float that you get and the expression of that power that you've created with the hips, Pick a point, a target, and keep your eyes fixed on it for as long as possible at the top. And secondly, keep your glutes switched on as long as possible, okay? Wait for the kettlebell to float or fall down, and then unlock at the last second, okay? As the common phrase goes, play chicken with the kettlebell. You wanna wait for the kettlebell to fall to you, and then just evade it at the last second. So, once again, I'm just going to do a set of swings. If you've got any questions after this uh, video, please feel free to email me. Um, the last bit though, after these swings, I'm just going to address some common programming questions on how you can get started training this movement straight away. Okay, but first of all, the last 10 swings, and then we'll wrap things up. So on this one, I'm going through my setup, grounding myself into the ground and focusing on getting myself trapped between the abs and the glutes. I'm sending compressed air down into the floor, I'm picking that point in front of me and letting that kettlebell fall and invading at the last second. So just talking now about how you implement this exercise into your training, implement it within the current programs that you're doing or the current classes that you're doing, obviously. But I would recommend you form some sort of practice to get this movement up to speed if it is something that is new to you. So I would recommend starting with the basic drills and using them as part of your warm-up, okay? Um, so for example, Maybe you go and just do the hip hinge drill. Maybe you just go through a mindful setup and get your feet in the right position. Maybe you deadlift a kettlebell. Find the drill that you liked best and implement it as part of your warm up, okay, before you do any swings. That might be just doing, like I said, those movements. It might be doing the dead stop swing. It might be doing a hike, 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 uh, sorry, hike, hike swing drill. It could be you know, um, just practicing the goat bag swings at different cadences, you know, lots of things that you can play with here. I would advise you to do it in your warm up before your regular workout if you have a current routine. If you want to take this a little bit further, I would advise you to start to do a simple kettlebell swing workout um, nearly daily. Okay, um, one of the great things about kettlebell swings is that they have a limited eccentric, okay, so a limited loading phase. Um, it happens very quickly. So you won't tend to, once you get up to speed on these moves, once you get past the very beginner stage, get very sore from kettlebell swings. You can do a relatively high volume of these every day and not really feel it, okay? So 
number of reps if you want to do your own practice and practice the kettlebell swing as it's on, on its own as a standalone movement or with a few other movements like push-ups or squats or something you're looking at probably anywhere from 50 to 100 reps per day okay or in a workout so however you organize your sessions 50 to 100 should do the trick you can go over that you can go under many people just do 25 reps per day some people go up as high as 270 280 these kind of numbers really high reps um, I don't think there's any need to be that extreme, especially if you're training regularly. Now remember, you're gonna, in these workouts, pay particular attention to stop signals, okay? We mentioned two of them earlier. Um, one of them is that the power drops out, so you'll know when this happens. The kettlebell won't float as high, or it will take a bit more effort to get it to that height. When the power starts to drop, the set's over. The cadence, and the timing of the movement should be rhythmical, okay? It shouldn't be swing, 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 swing. It should be swing, swing, swing. It should be at the same kind of cadence throughout the set. So you wanna really make sure that you are paying attention to that as well. The third stop sign is gonna be your technique. Okay, if your technique changes and you notice this uh, visually, if you train with a mirror or if you feel something's different, put the kettlebell down. You can take a rest, go through your mindful setup again, set yourself up for success with the things I've shown you today, and then continue the set. Okay, the kettlebell swing is not a movement that you just grind out more reps with. It's not that kind of movement, okay? There's uh, a lot of stuff that can go wrong with it. So when you notice uh, a power change, a cadence change, or a technique change, the set should stop. Um, apart from that, like I said, it's an exercise you can do almost daily, really useful for developing power in the hips, and also teaching you how to move like an athlete. Like I said, hips drive, arms guide, okay? This is the case for a lot of movements. So if you like the kettlebell swing and you master this, you can then take it up a notch and work on cleans, snatches, and other cool movements. Let me know what you think and uh, email me if you have any questions.